Today we're talking about my top five easy and healthy go-to dinners. Hey Killer Bees, it's Paula B, your best middle-aged fitness friend. And around here, we are all about making peace with your menopausal body. And for me, one of the best ways to make peace is to make things easy. You guys, a little while ago, we talked about how I was eating for weight loss. And now that I'm not eating for weight loss, I want you to know that things haven't really changed all that much. I plan for my meals well ahead of time. On Saturday, before I go grocery shopping, I have my kids or my husband, or sometimes I do it myself, I pick the meals that we're going to have for the week so that I've got all the ingredients on hand. After a busy day of working from home, doing what I do, I don't have to think Think very hard about having something quick and simple and more or less healthy to have for dinner. For me personally, the biggest emphasis is on the word easy. And you're gonna find when I show you what we have for most of our weeknight meals that they're very simple. They're almost always one or maybe two pans. I use a lot of pre-cut, pre-made ingredients that are still healthy enough that I can feel like I'm getting a great meal for a good price and also without spending a ton of time in the kitchen. I have a couple of notes for you before I show you what we eat. Number one is that you are going to be horrified by my knife skills. I'm just gonna throw that out there. I want you to know that these knives that I have are super, super old. I'm pretty sure they were a wedding gift. I know for a fact that I have never sharpened them. And yes, I cut towards myself. I know, I know. I don't recommend this. This isn't a cooking show. I'm not trying to tell you how to cook. I'm just showing you what I cook and the way I do it. You'll also notice that I don't really measure super duper carefully. These are all meals that I've been making for a while. So yes, I follow the recipe, but I also just kind of toss things on as I see fit. I do encourage you to try them the way the recipe calls for, and I do have the recipes for you in the description box below. Try them the way the recipe calls for first, and then make them your own. For most of the recipes, I have really kind of adjusted the spices to the way that I like to eat, and I've also, on some of the saucy ones, I make more sauce than it counts for. And I'll tell you about that when we're talking about the meals. And the other thing that I really want to point out is that these are not necessarily diet foods. The way that I eat works for me. I make portion sizes that work for my goals. Right now, my goal isn't weight loss. My goal is weight maintenance, and I'm working towards some running goals that I have in the future. So the way that I eat may or may not work for you personally. I don't count my macros, and actually right now I'm not counting my calories either, though I will have calorie information for you along with the recipes on my website. Again, open up the description box below and be sure to follow that link to go grab all of the recipes. Okay, are you guys ready for it? Let's start cooking. Meal number one is so simple that I'm embarrassed about it and I'm probably gonna say that about all of them. It's simply tortellini with meat sauce. And I don't make the tortellini, I don't make the red sauce, I don't make the meat. All I really do is cook them and put them all together. I boil up a bunch of tortellini. I make about a bag and a half of the, the kind that I buy, and that is enough for six servings. When I'm cooking the meat, I just, I crumble up the ground beef. I don't really put any other spices or onions or anything else into it because the sauce that I use has a little bit of everything. The particular sauce that I buy, I chose because it doesn't have a sugar in it and it has all ingredients that I can pronounce. So that's why I happen to like that one. Plus it's roasted garlic, which I love. So therefore that's why I chose that particular one. After I've browned the ground beef though, I chop up a zucchini to put into it. It's a way that I get a little bit of extra vegetables without a lot of extra work and without an extra pan. When the beef is browned and the zucchini has cooked a little bit, then I pour in the sauce to make sure that it gets nice and warm. After the tortellini have finished boiling, I just add them all together and I serve it up. Now you might like 
a little bit of Parmesan cheese on top, I do. That's totally up to you. You can garnish it however you like. Dinner number two is a relatively recent favorite. I just started making this um, probably about a year or so ago, and it has become an absolute go-to for weeknights when we are in a hurry. You will want to cook some rice separately, and actually, you might not even want to cook rice, depending on whether or not you like to eat rice. You can either serve this on a bed of rice or not. The way I eat it is with the rice. Then you're gonna cook up a package of chicken sausage. And again, this is really up to you exactly what kind you like to use. I actually prefer the breakfast sausage. I know that sounds so funny, but it doesn't have like a sugary or maple flavor to it at all. And I have found that some of the, the dinner time sausages are a little bit too spicy for my flavor. While you're cooking up the sausage, I throw in a bunch of garlic. You'll find that I use garlic in, um, I think literally everything. <laughs> I throw in a bunch of garlic. And then after the sausage is completely browned and the garlic is nice and toasty, then you put in two packages of shredded cabbage. You are absolutely welcome to shred your own. I'm too lazy to do that, so I go ahead and buy the packages of cabbage. When the cabbage has wilted down a little bit, I add in some soy sauce, some ground pepper, and some ginger. After it's all completely cooked, I chop up some green onions on top, serve it over the rice, and if you want to, you can put a couple of sesame seeds on top too. This one is delicious. Dinner number three has been a favorite for years. We love our black bean burgers around here, and they are just as easy, in fact, maybe even easier than regular cheeseburgers. You take two cans of, I use the reduced sodium, you're welcome to or not, I, it, they're the same price at my grocery store, so I tend to buy the reduced sodium of just about everything. I drain them and rinse them. I use two cans to make six burgers. I put in a medium chopped onion, one egg, and enough plain breadcrumbs to make it stiff. It's gonna depend on the size of your egg, honestly, how many breadcrumbs you put in. Generally speaking, it's about half a cup. You might need to adjust up or adjust down. There's The egg does need to cook all the way through, but there's nothing else about this recipe that needs to be like more firm or more stiff. So if it does end up a little bit gooey, just make sure that you cook it thoroughly. It's gonna be completely fine. I've never noticed a difference in the final product with fewer breadcrumbs or more breadcrumbs. I use spices that I like, which for me, of course, is gonna be garlic powder, black pepper, and cumin. When you have them formed into patties, you put a little bit of olive oil into the pan and you fry them just like hamburgers. When you've flipped over the first side, I like to put a slice of cheese on top so the cheese gets melted totally up to you what you'd like to put on or not put on your black bean burgers. For me, I serve them on thin buns. There's a couple of different varieties that are available at my grocery store. I just like the regular whole wheat. I put a little bit of spinach underneath so that it's ready to go. Sometimes I serve it with some guacamole. Sometimes I serve it with ketchup. It really depends on what I've got in the house and how I'm eating for the day and how much of a hurry I'm in, honestly. Next up is honey garlic stir fry. I just started making this one less than a month ago and it has already become a total family favorite. So simple, so delicious. We start with a package of boneless, skinless, chicken thighs. I prefer the thighs partly because they're less expensive and partly because I think they're more flavorful. Totally up to you if you want to use chicken breasts. I get the kind that already have the fat. They say it's completely trimmed off. I usually still have to trim off a little bit of it, but I get the kind that's completely ready to go. Put your olive oil into the pan and I start by actually frying the chickens whole. You'll see why in a little bit. I know sometimes people would prefer to chop them up first, but here's how I do this. I cook the chickens about 98% of the way through. While I pull them off and chop them into pieces is when I stir fry the veggies. Of course, you're welcome to make whatever kind of vegetables you prefer. Again, for convenience sake, I really like to just open up a bag of stir fry veggies and call it good. 
For this particular dish on camera, this doesn't look quite as good as it normally does because I was setting up the camera and trying to film. The vegetables got a little bit soggier than they normally do. So it's totally up to you to be really careful about your timing of this. Ordinarily for me, I can chop up the chicken pretty quickly and it doesn't take an especially long time. The tough part, which isn't even tough, is making the sauce. You'll use a one-to-one -one ratio of soy sauce to honey. The recipe that I found online used uses a third cup of each. I actually prefer it a little bit more saucy, so I go with a half a cup each. And then you throw in as much garlic as you want, which for me is a lot, and also some red pepper. Again, that's totally to your taste. If you like it to have a little bit of kick, you can add more. I just like a little tiny bit. After you've got the veggies and the chicken stirred in together, that's when you pour in the sauce and just mix it around so that it's all combined. It tastes so good that you don't even need to have rice underneath it, but you absolutely could serve it with rice or some kind of cauliflower rice if you'd like to. And last but not least, it's taco night. Everybody loves tacos, right? Tacos are the absolute easiest thing in the whole wide world. And this one actually has a lot of leeway. For me, I make this as absolutely convenient and simple as possible. I plan on tacos usually on Tuesday, you know, Taco Tuesday, but I bring them out anytime I'm in a huge hurry because this is like 10 minutes or less from thinking about dinner until having it on the table. They're soft tacos, which means that you don't have to do anything to the tortillas except maybe toss them in the microwave to warm them up so that they're nice and soft and pliable. For the chicken, I use the pre-cooked frozen chicken strips. Super, super simple. Toss them into a pan with a little bit of olive oil. Yeah, I then put on some garlic, some pepper, some cumin, because that's what I do. You could also put in an onion, which I usually do. Make sure that it's nice and warmed all the way through. Since it's already cooked, you don't have to worry about that too much. It's really up to you how long you wanna cook them. And then you can add on any kind of toppings you like. Around here, we love to go with a little bit of crumbling cheese, some guacamole, and some chopped up cherry tomatoes. You could go nuts with whatever kind of toppings you prefer. I do like to add a little splash of lime juice to give it a little bit of kick, and boom, they're done and ready to eat. And then I've got a bonus sixth meal for you. You guys, I know, I know that you think that some foods are just so full of calories or so fattening that you can't possibly have them on your healthy meal list. And I want you to know that there is a way to eat any kind of food that you want to and make it fit with your goals. I eat pizza every single week. Saturday night is pizza night around here. I buy a frozen pizza that happens to have the exact right amount of good flavor, good taste, good style, good everything, and it's the exact right number of calories that fits into my goals. For this one, this frozen pizza that happens to be my favorite thing in the whole entire world, half of a pizza it's only 440 calories, which is about the same as all the other meals. And this one is even easier than the rest of them. You guys, of course I encourage you to eat the kinds of foods that you love. These are foods that fit in with my healthy lifestyle that I love to make, I love to eat, and they feel really good to me. I would love to know, because you guys ask me all the time what I eat. I wanna know, what do you eat? Tell me some of your healthy, quick, and easy weeknight favorites. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.